A hundred developers make one game, but there's a twist. No communication between them is allowed. This is the ultimate pass the game challenge. The biggest game dev collaboration on YouTube. I'll start the project, working on it for one hour, and then pass it on to the second dev who also gets one hour. Then on to dev three, and this all the way up to 100 developers. So get ready for an absolutely crazy journey, starting with dev number one, me. So I decided to spend my time building beautiful mini hub worlds that would hopefully spark the imagination of the 99 other developers. Using Unity's terrain tools, I began by creating an earthy gateway that seemed to lead down to some gritty dwarven kingdom. Then I created a forlorn icy world that's even got a spooky door right in the middle that seems to lead down to some depraved dungeons. And finally, I created a nice warm, spicy desert, complete contrast from the other world, and that really promises, you know, wide open spaces and adventure. So I cannot wait to see what the next creators are going to do with this. Ow! Ah, uh, what the? Why? You broke my window! Oh, what happened? I heard you scream. He just threw a USB stick through our window! Oh, wow. Yeah! He, he must have a good throwing arm. He... What? What, well, you're, you're complimenting his throwing arm? No, I'm just, I'm just saying, it, it's pretty hard to break a window. I was watching a Mark Rober video about it just can now, I just... and you... Can I, can I just work on this now? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luck, man. yeah thanks, man. All right. Well, anyways, I guess since there's no gameplay yet, I'm the one to decide what the base for it will be. And because 98 devs have to work on this after me, I figured I'd use the Unity First Person controller. A decent amount of them should have some experience with this controller already. Plus, it just launches the project and doesn't keep it stuck in a state where nothing really exists. The levels themselves made me think of a Norse mythology setting. Except for the desert, but we can just ignore that one, don't worry about it. And I really want this game to have an interesting style, but but it, it should also easily be replicated by any future dev, be it 2D or 3D, so the player's hand is drawn in a style that immediately just gives it this fun aesthetic in my opinion. It allows future 3D artists to model the environment and 2D artists to get to draw new hands, or even 2D enemies which I'd like to see, like in retro shooters. Anyways, the player's hands have magical icy powers, because they might be a Norse mythological character maybe, that were known for their ice powers. There's a simple finger gun, a charge shot, I only had one hour, C come on now. Hey, I'm Aya. To make creating and editing abilities easier, I added the spell system from my game, Mana Valley. I converted the existing attacks to the new spell system and changed a few things that had been triggering me. At this point, the attacks were just visual. So I also brought over the damage system from my game. In order to provide future devs with a blueprint on how to configure damageable objects, I created some targets in this, what I'm calling Microsoft Paint style. One of the cool things about the damage system is that it pulses the scale and flashes any object that gets damaged. The flashing will work with any material, but it does require the dev to input the name of the shader's emission channel. So I guess we'll see if anyone figures that out. To complete the game loop, I made it so that targets will respawn after a delay. Now you can cast spells and damage targets forever. Now, before we continue this insane project, we wanted to let you know that we've created a complete free game development course that will teach you the fundamentals of Unity while actually building this beautiful little game that you can see right here. If you want to take your very first steps to becoming a game creator, then this is a must watch. Again, it's completely free and the link is in the description down below. And with that said, let's move on to developer number four. Okay, I see. Magic or something? Okay, see, I always wanted a game which is Battle Royale, but magic. So like PUBG, but Skyrim, put together. See what I'm saying? I think that could be really cool. This seems like the perfect opportunity to get it done. Obviously, I have no idea how to even begin doing something like that. However, I do have an idea. Let's say we just make the main menu. Eh? <laughs> and we'll just name the game, uh, you know, slightly suggestive title. <laughs> Voila! Now all we have to hope for is that the next person finds the menu and starts making our game. Hi, I'm Ryan, the developer of Nightstones, an open world game with some beautiful nature. So I wanted to bring some nature to this game. Instead of planting trees, I added a spell that I call Eat Your Greens. It's a low damage, high fire rate spell because I can't imagine anything more terrifying than a wizard rapid firing 5 calories of spinach at you. So eat your greens and check out Nightstones. I'm out! 
Hey, this is Games Plus James, and when I got the project, the first thing I did was fix the hand back to being active on screen. Then I added an indicator for which spell was active, added weapon switching with number keys, made one of the weapons a rapid fire machine gun, fixed up some effects, and then I was out of time. Good luck, whoever's next. I decided to focus my short time on two things. The first thing I did was spend a lot of time cleaning up the existing codebase. The second thing I did was to create a system for enemies to fight against. Since I have a good amount of experience with AI enemy logic from my tanks game, it was pretty quick for me to make a basic enemy, create different states, and allow it to follow and attack the player. Oh, and I also slapped on some horrifying temp art. When I got the game, I didn't quite know what I was looking at. But what I did know was that I needed to change switching the spells with the scroll wheel because it didn't work. Well, no, it, it does work. Yeah, it's, it's working. But testing the game to see what could possibly have been the plan of the people before me led to me getting crazy whiplash whenever I moved the mouse. So obviously I made a start to a settings menu that allows you to change your sensitivity. Is that necessary so early in development? No, but whiplash is only for car accidents, not video games. With this I added some code that could only be accessed when the game is paused, but that as well as properly damaging enemies, which you can't do yet, is a problem for a future day. Good luck. Hello, I'm Rugbug. Right now there's no way to tell how much health you have, but making a generic health bar would look pretty out of place right next to this hand. So I tried to make a realistic heart in the style of the hand and made it beat faster the lower health you have. I also replaced the textures in the level, trying to match this retro pixel art style that the previous artist was going for. Hey everyone, this is Ramis from Binary Lunar and I think you've come across one of my Unity tutorials on YouTube. So I have updated the main menu by adding pixel art and also I have added pixel art trees and updated to enemies to have pixel art animations. Hey, I'm Daniel from Hive. Jumping into this, I saw the main menu that piqued my interest, so I started creating the first ice stage. I then noticed we would need a way to spawn enemies in, so I spent a chunk of my time creating a simple spawning system that you can define custom areas for the enemies. Then I linked up the door managing system that would wait for all enemies within the room to be eliminated for it to open, and then with the remaining time, I fixed up a few loose ends and got it to this point. Hey, it's Ollie from Mashup Games. Let's look at what I did. First, I added a spell selection wheel where you hold right click and drag your mouse to the spell you want to select rather than using the scroll wheel. Second, I thought the game needed more than just projectile spells, so I added a spell that lets you grab objects and fling them across the battlefield at enemies. It also helps the arena feel a bit less empty with loads of objects in it. And that's it from me. Hello, it's Florian. Let me show you what I did to the project. I wanted to add some painkillers vibe, so I let the enemies drop a green orb on their death. Here it gives to the player an experience point to earn levels and allows him to unlock new spells. I also added a bunny hopping system where the character can increase its move speed by jumping continuously with the correct timing. And that's all, folks. When I got the project, I quickly realized that a lot had been done, but much of it was left broken or incomplete. So I quickly fixed the spell unlocking system, added a generic singleton class, I also added a validation check for the enemy spawn position on the nav mesh, and some other miscellaneous minor changes to improve playability. As soon as I opened Unity, I knew I was in for something special because I almost killed myself by walking into my own bullets. God, I hate when that happens. So to fix that, I- You guys don't care. You want to see the mana meter I made, the cool new hands that I made, the animations I added with this super satisfying new parry ability, which gives you all of your mana back. And to whoever made this map, no offense, but it kind of looked like sh So yeah, it still looks terrible, but I tried. I opened the project. I entered the ice level, but I see this. I decided to change the first level's terrain texture. I knew I had to add a new projectile. There's ice, there's green, but where's fire? Then I programmed both the death screen and the level complete screen. And every game needs a toilet, so I added one. As the very last thing, I added the fully functioning settings menu to the main menu and the pause menu. At first, I noticed the game had the original Doom aesthetic. Seeing enemies drop an XP orb on death instantly gave me the idea to make the orbs burst out like they do in Doom Eternal when you perform a glory kill. While I was working on making these orbs satisfying, I realized they could also be used to restore players' health and mana as well. This resulted in me making three types of orbs, mana, health, and XP. I also made enemies have slightly different drops depending on their type. Mages would drop more mana and vampires more health orbs. In theory, this should make the combat more interesting since the player would have to prioritize killing enemies that restore what they need the most. Finally, for some finishing touches, I added flash and damage indicators that made shooting enemies much more fun. You know what this game needs? 
a boss. So my brother started by modeling the boss and I started by reshaping the terrain and adding some grass and then adding some walls and pillars to create a boss like arena. I also started coding the basics of the boss. At this point the boss had been modeled and animated so I put this all together in unity with some particle effects and additionally I changed the boss's projectile so it follows the player. And here's what you get. First thing I've noticed is that you deal one damage to the enemies, which is a bit underwhelming, much better. Every game needs a dash, so I've added one. Then I've touched the eternal toilet. Next, I enabled spell rapid fire and also removed these almost invisible enemy projectiles and replaced them with big red balls. And lastly, I've added sound effects. So I mainly worked on the UI because I've only ever done 2D games before and didn't want to waste time figuring things out and unraveling everything. So I amateurishly copied the art style of this heart to make an arm for the mana, which sounded way cooler in my head. But then I replaced all the template rune UI. Lastly, I ran out of time trying to figure out how to prompt the upgrade screen manually instead of interrupting gameplay, so I just planted some trees instead. Hey everybody, I've only got a minute. So this is Orion from Constellation Creative. I was joined by my partners JT and Nacho for this project, as well as my dog Klaus. Uh, who helped me out a lot during the process. So we decided to treat this a bit like a game jam where we went in and had JT do a design document to kind of design what we were going to do for the project, which ended up being an armor drop system to modify character abilities and character stats. I started out by programming some scriptables for armor and an armor master list. I made that auto populate, remove and shift items when they changed rarity for balancing. For the armor, I made a tooltip system with a custom text parser for effects, which I was really proud of. So here in the arena, you can see the finished product. If I kill this enemy, I'll be able to drop an item. Item has a tool tip and an effect. And when we equip the item, for the most part, they all have functional effects, except uh, for a few of them that are meant to affect spells. Thanks for having us. Can't wait to see what the next developer cooks up. Ooh, wasn't that cool? Anyway, I only have three hours, so let's get started. Here's what I want to do. This is a first person shooter and the shooting doesn't work. See when I'm firing the bullets are going to the right of the radical. So basically, instead of shooting the bullets like this, we need to shoot them like this. Dope, on to problem number two. Love the art style we're going for here, but some of the textures are pixelated and some are not. To fix this, I brought the non-pixelated textures into Photoshop, increased the contrast a little bit, scaled them down, and now instead of looking like this, they look like this. Damn, so and finally, number three, the enemy orbs are looking a little too orb-like at the moment. So I hopped into Shader Graph, composed this nice little shader to make our ice attack look a little bit more icy, and our fire attack look a bit more fiery. Actually, one more thing. I added this secret room somewhere in level one. Let's see if anyone finds it. I make you get out. Of here. Get the heck out of here right now. Wizard Balreal, what does magic smell like? Best art is the side of things. I don't know what that means. Wow, amazing. So they've taken my little hub world, changed it around quite a bit, it's not the ice world anymore, and they've actually created an insane giant world here. Wow. Okay, okay. Okay, a, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I like the visuals a lot. I really like the textures going on. I like the UI a lot. Not sure if I'm the biggest fan of the hand being low poly 3D instead of the same style as the rest of the UI, but it might be for the better, maybe. And hold middle mouse button to open spell select. I do have a bit of an issue. My middle mouse button does not work. I feel like Tice over here. Uh, also, my spacebar is broken, so please. <laughs> Calm down, okay? Also, there's the problem. My spacebar still doesn't work, and you throw them with space. Can I jump? I don't know. My spacebar is broken. Oh boy, I can jump as well. Wizards. An army of wizards shooting fireballs at me. Yes, nice. Okay, I like that the enemies are 2D sprites. It feels good to play. Ooh. The sounds like this, I don't know what it is. It feels juicy. Like, I like the, the hits, the hit noise feel impactful. Wow, that was... Very polished, really smooth. This is looking really great. Wow. Yo, and <laughs> oh, look, the uh, Ice Blast still has the same Norse rune as a symbol. That's cool. Yeah, I like these. I like the UI a lot. The style is like a weird mix of things. It's like a 3D hand. I'm not sure which I like better. I feel like it probably, I mean, makes it from like a game dev point of view. It probably makes sense to just lean into the pixel because then anybody could really do it. Doesn't seem super powerful. Like, and <laughs> like, oh. All right. This one actually feels less impactful. Which is kind of interesting. Okay, so what's this? I can't read any of this. 
course, we would need a beautiful fantasy, uh, fantasy music here. So all the music composers out there, guys, if you want to take part in this project and help us out with this, make sure to uh, contact us at pestthegamechallenge at gmail.com. Ooh. What's this? Feather cloak. Movement speed. 6%. <laughs> this doesn't feel like 6%. Oh my god. Wait, why is there a toilet up there? I'm sure there's a boss, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, there's a boss. Outsmarted by the dev. I'm getting way too fast. Why am I so fast? Yeah, it's cool. It's interesting. This is like a quarter of the way done. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it sort of develops. I want to keep this short, but this is looking really promising. I cannot wait to see what the next 25 developers are going to do. For example, how will this game look when we reach 100 developers? It's going to be absolutely insane. Cool. This is totally different than anything I've worked on uh, in these collabs. So uh, it's cool to see. And I'm excited for the next three quarters of people to work on it the combined effort of these 25 unique creators to create this really, really great looking project that's got so much potential. So yeah, really congrats to everyone. Thank you all for taking part and um, looking forward to making more progress on this game in the new year. We hope you enjoyed part one of this project, but as you can see, the game isn't over yet. So we're gonna carry over this insane collaboration into 2024. And if you wanna be part of this amazing project, be one of the next 75 developers, then just email us with your game dev portfolio at pastthegamechallenge at gmail.com. And there's a high chance we ask you to join us on this crazy game creation journey. Now guys, do you want a free and easy way to level up your game programming skills? If so, then you should check out our sponsor, Brilliant. Math plays a massive role in programming video games, for example, programming enemy AI, or even simulating physics. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data, and computer science from the comfort of your own home. Their lessons are fun and extremely interactive, which makes the learning process that much more enjoyable. For example, guys, you should check out this course on vectors. We use vectors all the time in game development, so understanding how they work is really crucial. You can get started completely for free for the next 30 days using our link in the description and the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off the annual premium subscription so go to the description down below and join brilliant now remember that if you also want to learn how to make video games then you can check out our free game development course the link is in the description with that said cheers